my kids. <laughs> Going to make a series of videos on extra quizzes that you could take. Uh, next to this, you can find these videos at Mr. You, you can actually find the quiz at MrKrauseMath.com. Look for Regents Review. And somewhere on that page, you'll see extra quizzes or Regents Review quizzes. And it'll have the document that you can download as well as the video on how to solve those. And I would suggest you try them on your own. And then watch the video, see how you do. But it's just more practice for you, because I know you guys want more practice. Everybody wants more practice, because we just do. Let's go back and forth. I don't know why we're... So, we're going to make a key. Mr. Key. Mr. K. Stands for Mr. Key. All right. Anytime you see the words real, rational, and unequal... You're looking for the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, right? And if you remember correctly, uh, this one here is x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 0. This one here is x squared minus 5x minus 24 equals 0. This one's x squared plus 2x plus 10. 10 equals 0, and this one is x squared minus 3x minus 14 equals 0. So there's four different possibilities. You can end up with a negative number, which would mean imaginary. That's not what we're looking for. You can end up with 0, which would mean the roots would be equal to each other. You can end up with positive. Now, positive has two different answers. Numbers that are perfect squares that you can take the square root of that will be rational or numbers that are not perfect squares, like 27, that you can't take the square root of, and they will be irrational. So what we're looking for is real, rational, and unequal. So we're looking for a positive discriminant that's a perfect square. Not zero. So, if I take the first one, and I go 64, that's b squared, minus 4 times 1 times 16, that's this one, I get 0. Ah, those roots are equal. I don't want equal roots. Not the right answer. If I take choice 2, I get 25 minus 4 times 1 times negative 24. And if I do this, I get 121. Ah, perfect square. Positive. Looks like my choice, but let's just check the rest of them. If I do number 2, I get 4 minus 4 times 1 times 10. Now, I did this one purposely because it turns out to be negative 36. Perfect square, but it's negative. So that makes it imaginary, and we don't want imaginary roots. And the last one, I get 4 minus 4 times, oh, not 4. Sorry, kids. I get 9 minus 4 times 1 times negative 14. Uh, 4 times 14 is 2856, 56, so this becomes like 55, no, 56, 65, 56, 65, I think it's 65, which is positive, but I don't know what the square root of 65 is, it's close to 64, but it's not, it's 65, so that's not the right answer, so choice 2 is my right answer. There's a graphic way of looking at these two as well. So if you wanted to graph these, like for example, let me go into graph mode. I could graph these and say, oh, right, let's say I want to graph x squared minus 8x plus 16. And I graph it, you'll see it only hits the axes once. One equal root, 4 and 4. Not going to work. If I look at choice 2... It's minus 5x, minus 5x, 
minus 24 and I hit enter and you'll notice it hits a nice root there and a nice root there I can always use my trace feature trace trace graph and then just go ding 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 oh I was sorry there and it tells you one of the roots is eight and if you went over here the other root would be four tab Hit the up arrow. I don't remember what the other one was. Let's look at the imaginary one. X squared plus 2X. So, so plus 2X. I think it was plus 10. And then menu, zoom, zoom fit, I think. I don't know. Whatever. That's not a really good one. Let's just... Here's what I want to show you. It doesn't hit the x-axis. If it's imaginary, it's not going to hit the x-axis. It's not a great picture, but notice it never intersects the x-axis. Therefore, there are no roots. They're imaginary. All right, so how do I find a ratio? In order to find a ratio, normally you'd have something. I'm, I made this one particularly nasty, but normally you'd have a ratio like, you know, negative 3x and then, and then 9x squared and then negative 27 x cubed or something like that and you'd have to what you do is you take the second one and you divide by the first one well i made this one a little bit more tricky so it's one half one half oh here we go one half x to the fifth y to the negative one all over negative 2 over 3 x cubed y squared. So I can take care of this a couple of different ways. One is I can take care of these numbers and just put them in my calculator. And 1 half divided by negative 2 thirds. So control division. Oops, I should go to my calculator. Control division. Uh, and in the numerator I got 1 half. So 1 over 2 all over control division negative two over three hit enter it's negative three fourths so i'm looking for negative three fourths well look i only have one answer negative three fourths so there's my answer choice two um but had i taken care of these letters too wouldn't the these come down here and make y cubed because it's got a negative x when it comes down and makes y cubed and then this one has two more x's, so this just becomes x squared, which is why it's x squared on top, y cubed on bottom. Anytime you see this whoosh, double angle, that means you must go over to your formula sheet. And if you look at your formula sheet, your formula sheet says sine of 2a is equal to 2 times sine of a times cosine of a. So this is equal to 2 times negative 7 over 25 times something. I don't know what. So terminates in quadrant 4. So I draw a triangle in quadrant 4. 7 over 25. Opposite over a hypotenuse. Excuse me. Opposite over hypotenuse is sine. And then I use the Pythagorean theorem, 7 squared plus x squared equals the hypotenuse squared, 25 squared. And I'm not going to go through that math. That's pretty easy to find out that this missing side is really a 24. Now, cosine is positive in this quadrant, so it's positive 24 over 25. Take all this stuff, type in my calculator. It's going to be two parentheses. Uh, I'm just going to do it this way. Negative 7 divided by 25, parentheses, 24 divided by 25. If you do it correctly, it'll show you that, oh, look, they're really fractions. And negative 336 over 625. Good. We're almost done. Nah. So in order to solve this, you've got to multiply through by the common denominator. Now, I purposely made this one difficult. If you look at these, doesn't it almost look like it should be negative 1? Kind of looks like it should be negative 1. But it's not. The negative 1 rule is when you have like x minus 3 
and 3 minus x. The exact same things, both of them minus, just one of them's backwards. So this is not the negative 1 rule. This is not at all the negative 1 rule. What we're going to do, I know what's causing problems probably. Well, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply through by the common denominator, which is p, p, and p. Now in this first one, the p's are going to cancel. It leaves me just m minus. This one, nothing cancels, rp. All over, this one, the p's cancel. It leaves me m plus rp. Again, these are not, this is not the negative one rule. The negative one rule says you both have a mi minuses. This would be the negative one rule, m minus rp over rp minus m. They're backwards. And then you can say, ah, yeah, those equal negative one. That's not the case. This is the answer right here, choice two. I can also use my calculator to check it. All right, so I kind of decided to mess with kids on this problem. So this is just me being a jerk because they have jerks at state ed that are going to mess with you as well. They're called math people that like to make sure that you understand math. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the conjugate because you can't leave that if they ask you to rationalize the denominator, you can't leave that radical down there. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate, which is the square root of w minus w. It is just the opposite of this. So in the numerator, I could distribute, but I'm not going to because you're not supposed to until the end. Um, square root of w minus w. Now I could distribute this, but don't do that. Wait to the end. Maybe you're going to do it. Maybe you won't. Maybe it makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. Now we're going to distribute here. W square to W times the square root of W is W. Now, I don't need to do all the things. I hope at one point you realize, look, these two give me negative W square root of W, and these two give me positive W square root of W. They're just going to cancel. So really all i got to do is multiply W times negative W, which is minus W squared. Now, if you distribute this in the numerator, you will end up with this as your answer, which is what many of my kids picked. Not the right answer, because it says in simplest form. What you need to do in the denominator is take out a w. There's a w that you can factor out, and you end up with 1 minus w. Now, this w, let me get my pink, this w cancels with this w. And it leaves me 2 times that all over 1 minus w. And there's my answer. Let's move on. You can go back. Ooh, made this one complicated. Going to need a little coffee to figure this one out. Do my eyes bug out when I drink? It's like, woo, coffee. All right, kids. First things first. We're going to take care of this denominator because it looks mean and nasty. Nasty. Na no. So when you have something raised to an exponent like we have here, every one of these things gets that exponent. So it's 1 half to the negative 3. X. Now, when you have an exponent... And another exponent, so an exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply those exponents. That's something you just got to know. To the 9. Y to the negative 6. Now, I want to take care of these numbers, so I'm going to grab my calculator. I mean, I know it's 3 halves or something like that, but I'm going to check it. Control division, 12 all over. Control division, 1 half raised to the negative 3. Ah, 3 halves. There it is. So 3 halves are my numbers. Now I'm going to take care of my variables. Well, there's nothing to do with the x's just yet. We're going to leave those as x4, x9. But, and what I mean by to do with them, they don't move. These negative exponents, because they're negative, have to come up here. And these have to come down here. So what I really end up with is y to the 6th on top, y cubed on bottom. And now I can finish this. 3 over 2. Who has more x's? The denominator. How many more? 5. So I get rid of 4 of them, and I 5. That 4 cancels with 4 of these, leaves me 5. Who has more y's? The numerator. How many more? 3. y cubed. 
Don't rely on the fact that you think that's the right answer. Know that's the right answer. Know for 100% certain. Yes, this is going to be a pain in the neck to check. You got three hours. You don't want to be that kid that leaves early and fails the test or doesn't get a perfect grade because you didn't check your answers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some numbers. Oops. I'm going to take 5.2 and stow it into X. All right. Clearly hitting the wrong buttons. Control bar X. This can be done on the TI-84 as well. You just hit that stow button. It's like Ebonics. Stow. I'm going to stow it. I like saying that in class just because it makes me sound really stupid and cool at the same time. So I'll stow those in. It's a button down at the bottom left that says stow, and then you use a variable X or A or B or C. It doesn't matter. You can use the alpha button for that. Ask your teacher. She'll tell you. So we'll do control division, and I'm going to type this in. 12 X raised to the fourth times Y raised to the negative three. I'm going to type it in exactly as it appears. And then parentheses, oops, not there. Parentheses, control division, one over two, X raised to the negative three, Y squared. And all of this raised to the negative 3. Now this is going to give you some ridiculous de decimal. There it is, right there. Well, if I remember correctly, and I probably don't, but we'll see. This is 3 y, was it, I think it was y cubed all over 2 x raised to the 5th. Ah, that was right. There we go. So we can verify that our answer is, in fact, correct and simplified. All right, we're moving, we're moving, we're talking, we're doing. Get a different letter. We're on question seven. Local assessment are normally distributed with a mean of 81 and a standard deviation of 4. So as soon as you see normally distributed, you should be drawing your normal distribution curve. And if you remember correctly, in the middle goes the mean. So we're going to throw in 81 there. And then I'm going to go one standard deviation to the right, 85. And I'm going to go one standard deviation to the left, 77. And then I want to think about what the question says. Did 10 kids score above 89%? Well, I haven't even gotten to 89%. So what I want to do is continue with my standard deviations and go, okay, there's 89 right there. That's plus one standard deviation and plus one standard deviation. Now let me see if I got my formula sheet. Don't remember where my formula sheet is. I thought I had a formula sheet somewhere. Statistics, ah, there it is, formula sheet. Okay, there it is. So let me get rid of all this crap and then make this bigger. All right, so I went out. Now, you got to be careful. You went out two standard deviations, not two lines. You went out two standard deviations. So that's one standard deviation and two standard deviations. Now, what do I want to do? I want scores above 89%. So this is 89% right here. And I want all the scores above 89% or above two standard deviations. So... Here's two standard deviations, so I want all of this. So I'm going to add 1.7 plus 0.5 plus 0.1, and I get 2.3%. So I come back over here and I say, okay, this is 2.3%. Well, 2.3% of what? Oh, there's 400 students that took the test. So I can take 400 students and multiply by 2.3%. Remember, you gotta divide by 100 to figure out what decimal it is, or just move the decimal twice. We're gonna multiply by 0 0.023. And if we do that, we use our calculator, you'll find out, oh, there's 9.2. Okay, that's the mathematics, you have to show this. And then you have to decide, okay, you have to actually answer the question. The question is, did 10 students score above an 89%? 
no 10 students did not score above 89%. And then say something like approximately nine students did. But you have to write a sentence. You have to explain your answer. Oh, so you're this kid. You go, oh, cosine... 165. Can you believe they give us that? Oh my god, look at that. Negative 0 0.97. Really? If you're still doing that, I'll see you in summer school. Oh yeah. Hot, sticky, not at the beach summer school. Not fun. Let's do it the right way. What you have to do is not use sine, because this is a cosine problem. So we're going to do cosine of 165. We just need to represent 165 a slightly different way. We're going to do it as 45, because it ends in a 5, plus 120. Now, why did I pick those angles? Because those are angles I know about. I know things about those angles. You're going to go over to your formula sheet. Your formula sheet says, right here, in bold letters, we're going to be adding with cosine. So it's cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. There's my formula sheet. So come over there, back to wherever I was. There I am. I don't know why I just did that. This is where I got to go. So the formula says cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. But Mr. Krauss, I didn't memorize your flashcards. I don't know what these are. Well, okay kids, let's talk. There's only like five or six different fractions we required you to memorize this year. They were the square root of 2 over 2, 1 half, the square root of 3 over 2, and, oh, square root of 3, and square root of 3 over 3. These two mostly deal with tangent. These are the three that you became very familiar with. So if you go to your calculator and you type in square root of 2 over 2, troll division radical 2 over 2, 0.7071, and then you type in control division, the square root of 3 over 2, 0.866. You're like, all right, I got that. So how does that help you out? Well, let's say you don't remember what the cosine of 45 is. You don't know that it's the square root of 2 over 2. Well, type in the cosine of 45. And, oh, look, 0 0.7071. Oh, yeah, that's square root of 2 over 2. I don't remember what the cosine of 120 is. I don't know that that's got a reference angle of a half. I don't remember what that is. So I do cosine, I mean, the reference angle of 60 degrees. And I don't remember what the cosine of that is. Cosine 120. Oh, look, negative 0.5. Isn't that a half? Negative 1 half minus sine of 45 well hopefully you remember the 45 those are pretty easy but sine if you've forgotten sine of 45 it's also equal to 0 0.7071 which is just the square root of 2 over 2 and then you don't remember the sine of 120 okay let's check that out sine 120 0.866. What was that again? I don't remember. 0.866. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, that was radical 3 over 2. So if you've forgotten this stuff, you can always go back and realize, oh, yeah, these are the fractions I have to know, and I remember. I just don't remember which one's which. All right, when you multiply fractions, you multiply numerators, multiply denominators. So you get negative radical 2 over 4 minus radical 6 over 4. Yes, you can multiply radical 2 times radical 3, since they're both in radicals. It says 
expresses a single fraction, not two fractions. So we keep the four, and you go, okay, negative radical two minus radical six. Now, you remember that decimal at the beginning? It's kind of useful now. I want to see if this is the actual right answer. So I'm going to go back to my calculator. I'm going to go control division, negative radical two, forgot the two, minus radical six all over four. Now, I don't remember what that looks like it, but let me just make sure. Cosine one six five, bam, kaching, right answer. All right, that's this is the this is my first one, but it's actually quiz number eleven of many 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 quizzes that I'm going to do. All right, kids, good luck. If this helps, subscribe, and also let me know if you get a hundred. I'm so excited. Good luck, kids. Only a couple weeks left. Bye. Have fun storming the castle.